Hi guys. What we're going to do in this video is talk about how to use our effect size program. So you've gotten to this by either running it in our studio or using our online version of the Moat app. So what this is going to allow you to do is to calculate effect sizes and their confidence intervals. This video in particular is going to cover Z scores. So uh, particularly we're looking at Z tests where you're going to calculate some sample mean, your sample standard deviation, some population mean, you're going to be given the population standard deviation and you have a sample size. Uh, and what we're going to do is talk about how to take maybe an example from your textbook in class or if you're a researcher on um, the data that you've been working with and put it into our app. So to do this, I created just some very simple examples that I actually give my intro to a statistics course and we'll see if we can get those worked. All right, so I, I have the average quiz test time on my 10 item test that's 22 minutes. And there is a population standard deviation of 10 minutes. My class of 25 students, so there's the sample size, took 19 minutes on this test. And we'll go ahead and pretend that they have a standard deviation. Except I can't spell what's new of five minutes. Now, the standard deviation of five minutes is not important for the hypothesis test, but it will be useful when presenting your statistics. So let's take all these numbers and plug them in over here. So first thing you want to do is put in your sample mean, which we said was 19 minutes. My sample standard deviation, which we just made up was five minutes. The option here is to enter standard error if you don't have standard deviation, one or the other. Don't do both. So anytime you see something here on the left, um, this is, it means it's required. So you have to enter something on each line, but for standard deviation versus standard error, you can enter one or the other. Uh, same thing with population standard deviation or population standard error, one or the other. If you enter something here on the right, it will trump whatever is on the left. Our population mean was 22.5 minutes and the population standard deviation is 10 minutes and I have 25 students. So 10 minutes and 25 students. Here under alpha, which I'll enter is your type one error criterion. This is usually 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.10. So this will be given to you as part of an, maybe an assignment if you're in a course or if you're a researcher, you would be wanting to justify why that alpha. It's often listed as like P less than 0 0.05, but what we're really talking about is the type one error rate. So it's got an example number here for you um, to help you remember what this is, but you do have to type something in. We've got this error message right now because we haven't hit calculate. Once we hit calculate, what's gonna happen is uh, it's gonna populate with some text for you. It's gonna define the effect size that you're looking at. So this is D, which is generally interpreted as the standardized difference between two scores. Um, specifically like this is sort of Cohen's D, but just a D statistic. It gives you that effect size stat. So our statistic is negative 0.03, um, negative 0 0.3, sorry. So this would be in the small area if you're using the traditional interpretation standards. But since we think we, these should be based on the field of choice, we haven't told you if it's small, medium, or large. So I would say small because I'm used to teaching students uh, specific criteria ranges, but you should base this on your own field. And it does give you the confidence interval. The confidence interval for a Z test on D is a normal interval. And the larger the sample size, the smaller this will get. Um, at the moment, this is going to be very large because our sample size is pretty small. There's an interpretation for that confidence interval. And the way that we're treating this is whether or not it includes zero. If it includes zero, um, we're going to suggest that maybe this effect size is similar to zero. If it does not include zero, we're going to suggest that the effect size is not zero. And so that way you can um, think about confidence intervals sort of similar to uh, significance testing in the sense of does it include a point value or not. Our summary statistics here, so this is going to be our means that we entered. So this is going to spit the numbers back out to you, but it's also calculated standard error for you and giving you the 95% confidence interval of the sample mean. So the reason that we needed to enter the sample standard deviation was to get all of the statistics one might report, and this is listed in APA style. 
Um, you might not present standard deviation and standard error, but we gave you both anyway. Our test statistic here is what, what the z-score would be, and then an interpretation of that test statistic given alpha. So our p-value is greater than alpha, and so we would not consider this statistically significant. If we wanted to change alpha, the interpretation of that value would change. None of the other statistics would change because we haven't changed any of the top numbers, um, but if the p-value is less than alpha, it switches to saying that it is significant. Let's say you wanted to do this actually in R, um, because you're a re R researcher and you want to know what code is running in the background, you can click on code. It's going to give you the formulas that we're using to calculate uh, the different statistics. So the formula for D is the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the population standard deviation. While the formula for Z is the mean minus the population mean divided by the population standard error. Uh, the code where it's actually happening in our package moat in the background, and this gives you all of the um, help file for that. So it shows you what you should enter and how it should look if you're actually running this in R. And so it tells you each thing that you must define and gives you an example of what one looks like. When you run this particular function, this will spit out a list with all of these values in it. Um, and D, upper and lower D, upper and lower sample size, Z and P. So you'll get all of these same numbers that you see here back in R if you're gonna use R. The help tab is gonna show you this video. So there's one example where you have the Z test scores. Well, you can work another one here. And so let's say we're looking at ETS and they're giving people the major field test, which is a, a test in psychology. So um, let's say in 2003, Baylor wondered how well they were doing. Baylor is a uh, private school in Texas. And so they reported that their mean and standard deviation of um, the people who took the exam was 156.8, 14.6. So that's gonna be these numbers, 156.8, 14.6. Thirty-six students, so there's the sample size, took the exam this particular year, and those students had a mean score of 164.6. So we're going to change this to 36 students and 164.6. We're going to make up a sample standard deviation, but normally you would calculate this from your actual statistics. And I'm going to set alpha to 0 0.01. So these numbers will all be given to you. Remember, if it's a population number, we're talking about Z, these are numbers that you should know, should be given to you. If it's a sample number, you can calculate them. And when we calculate that, we get an effect size of about 0.5, so about a half a standard deviation or standardized difference apart. But the confidence interval is still really large because there's a lot of variance and the sample size is small. So our confidence interval does include zero, so we're not really sure. Um, it gives me my summary statistics back. It gives me my test statistic, which would be considered significant. Let's say we just upped this, so we multiplied by 10. Um, our confidence interval actually should go down here. So um, it's gonna be based on the, oh, I'm sorry, it's based on the population standard deviation. So that's one reason why this isn't changing. But the confidence interval for our, um, our sample is going down. You'll notice that it also tells me it's a 99% confidence interval, which is gonna be based on alpha. And then it's the same code. Other thing we can do that's related to Z is that we can come over here and click on mean differences and go to Z tests from Z. So let's say you're looking at somebody's research project um, in, that's been published, and so you don't have the means, and you just wanna calculate this directly from Z. On this page, which you'll see, you have much less options because <laughs> these are the only things you need. So let's say they report that having a 2.5 Z test with 100 participants and a population standard deviation of four points. We're gonna keep alpha as 0.05 and hit calculate. Okay. So it tells me the Cohen's D interpretation again, it tells me the effect size and the 95% confidence interval of that effect size um, and then my Z statistic, which is the same number it gave me, I gave it, get put into it, but then it gave me also a p-value. This is a different set of codes, so I'm gonna 
click over here, the formula for D, given everything that, uh, given the numbers you've entered, is uh, Z divided by the square root of N, which takes out the square root of N from the standard error formula um, here. And so Z is not actually calculated uh, because you entered it, but we just gave, went ahead and gave it to you anyway. This function is DZZ, and so it allows you to, um, to enter Z in and get the, the, um, the effect size, but to get that confidence interval, you have to enter SIG. Now, you don't have to enter SIG, but you won't get um, a confidence interval if you don't enter sigma. And so that's what it warns you right here. So if you leave sigma blank, you won't see a confidence interval. Okay. So that's how you work our Z test pages. Uh, if you're wanting to learn more about some of the other pages, you should click on, let's say, single sample T's, click on help, and you'll see the video for this.